Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan. And yes, he is my dad as well. Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this glorious January weekend? I'll tell you what's shaking, Ryan. The Bears. They're scared to death. This market had a phenomenal run last year, and we are off to the races in 2020. Matter of fact, I just renamed it. It's the Roaring Twenties. <laughs> Bob, I mean, we're only you know how many days into the year, and you're already this bullish. Um, I'm impressed. You know, Rye, I'm the eternal optimist. Uh, nothing will ever change. This is true. This is true. Well, we've got a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about retirement catastrophes. We're going to discuss some of the biggest financial disasters you need to avoid at all cost to protect your retirement. We're going to talk about picking the right advisor. Do you have the right financial advisor? Well, Bob and I are going to break down what characteristics are important when you choose the right financial professional, along with this week's financial propaganda. That's what we call out the worst advice, best advice the financial media has recently been broadcasting. And on our spotlight segment today, we have Emily DeValent, financial advisor here at Payne Capital Management. She's going to actually review and break down someone's real retirement plan for you. So we've got a great show ahead. Let's hop to it. So, Bob, I thought we could discuss some of the bigger retirement catastrophes we've encountered over the years because of things like poor assumptions, overall bad planning, or worse, no planning at all. And one that I think about all the time is we've seen people get wiped out by a market crash and have to work longer because they didn't really manage the risk well in their portfolio. You know, Ryan, it's, uh, it's an unfortunate thing, but it's happening again as it does in every cycle, because people are motivated by two very strong emotions. Fear and greed, as we know, are yeah. the two emotions that drive investors in most every market. And every cycle, every bull cycle we've had, I've been through three big booming bull markets. Read one right now, by the way. Uh, but at the beginning of every single bull market, it's born in pessimism. And that's when fear is running rampant. That's right. And I know you have a horror story. I remember you had a client back when the tech bubble burst hmm. right before it. You had them with this beautiful tax-free municipal bond portfolio. You ran their projections. They were set for life, but they got the tech bug and they wanted to sell all their bonds and put everything to tech. How did that end? <laughs> and I don't think uh, it was well. it, it very, very sad, Ryan. Matter of fact, they had been a perfect candidate for financial planning. We planned their life perfectly to the point up to where they sold their business. They had a lot more money. So even though we were in the midst of a big booming bull market, we were able to take a lot of that risk money off the table because of all the new money they had. And we bought a portfolio of AAA rated 7% tax-free municipal bonds. Unbelievable. So dad, I remember you had a client back in the late nineties that had a very conservative portfolio. They had all these municipal bonds paying tax-free income, but they got the tech bug. How did that end? Ended very poorly, Rye, because what happened was they got greedy and they had all the money they needed. Matter of fact, we built a magnificent conservative portfolio, balanced portfolio with majority of the money in 7% coupon tax-free municipal bonds. The problem is, you know, going after going to cocktail party after cocktail party, hearing about all these dot-com millionaires and how much money people were making. They just uh, they couldn't stand the fact that they had a very conservative portfolio. They couldn't stand it. They fired me right before the market crash. They transferred every dime to the Janus Mutual Fund companies. And I said, you know, you're making a big mistake. I said, there's a lot of risk in that strategy. They said, no, you don't understand. We're buying five different mutual funds at Janus, not just <laughs> one. Of course, they were all 70, 80% in the same technology stocks. Right, they didn't lose a little bit. They lost 60% of their net worth in a period of six months. Ouch. Ouch. Uh, and that's the thing you have to remember when you're building your portfolio for retirement. It's not about getting all the upside. Like last year was a fantastic year in the market, but it's really about 
you can't afford to lose on the downside. So that's the equation you need to run. You need to look at your portfolio now and say, hey, if the market goes down tomorrow, am I protected? You need to know the answer to that question because you're never going to know how much risk you have until it's too late. So Ryan, I guess, you know, uh, maintaining your cool, right? Don't get too fearful. Don't get too greedy. You know, just do, just be just right. Um, have a portfolio based on your goals and things will work out fine. But what are some of the other things, right? How about tax planning? How about when you don't handle the taxes right? How does the IRS feel about that? Well, talk about catastrophes. We had one recently. We have a new client we're bringing over who turned 78 this year, and he was still working in his practice. The problem is, because he owned a percentage of the company, he actually should have been taking distribution since he was 71 years old because that was the mandatory distribution age. It's seven years later, Bob, and he just found out he hasn't been taking distributions he should have that entire time, which means a 50% tax penalty every single year for the money that he hasn't taken out. That's a terrible place to be. God, I remember a comedian uh, used to tell stories about the IRS, and he said, well, I'm just not going to pay my taxes. When they knock on my door, I'm going to say, well, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? The IRS does not have a very good sense of humor <laughs> about that kind of answer. Well, that's the thing that really ticks me off about this other firm. They uh, told the client it was his responsibility that he was supposed to remember that he should be taking his required mandatory distributions. I don't know. I don't think a fiduciary would say that. Do you, Ry? No. And, and this gentleman is a doctor. And last time I looked in med school, they don't teach you about uh, RMDs or mandatory distributions from your IRA. So it's so important that you're getting the right tax advice. And something we talk about a lot is by just tweaking your portfolio the right way and being proactive, there's so much money you can save in tax, never mind tax penalties, but you can really optimize in your favor if you're proactive about it. So not doing a good job in your tax planning, it is a definitely retirement catastrophe. How about someone, Rye, who retire without a realistic idea of exactly how much they need it to live without that paycheck coming in every week? Yeah, because there's so many things you need to know when it comes to your retirement plan. We talk about things like inflation. You know, cost of living is going to go up over time. Have you accounted for that? The other big one is, Bob, we talk about this all the time because you're living longer. What if you have a prolonged illness? What about health care costs? Can your portfolio sustain a hit of like $250,000 if, God forbid, you need long-term care or something that's medical related? These are things you need to put your portfolio under that stress test for. Yeah, that's a, they're, they're emergency situations, but you know, I found over my 45 years that a lot of problems that we have with you as clients is that you love your children too much and you dote on them. And, and the problem is children can ruin your retirement because they suck all the money out of you while you're supposed to be saving it. I thought the rule was you could never dote enough on your grown adult children, Bob. I don't know. Maybe uh, I'm confused. Wait a minute, Rob. There's a sign on my desk that says, uh, beware of the gift that keeps on taking those <laughs> wonderful children. Um, no, in all seriousness, but you've seen people that they spend too much on their children trying to help them out with their new house and their mortgage and their grandkids. Hey, look, you got to do your fair share and, and help your kids. But, you know, you can't abandon your re retirement planning. And that's where no planning is a problem. Yeah, exactly right. So if you're thinking to yourself right now, I do not want to get caught with a retirement catastrophe. I want to make sure that I do the right tax planning. I want to save money on taxes, not pay tax penalties. I want to make sure I'm protected against the next market crash. I want a portfolio that's built to win in the long term. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $500,000 saved for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan, and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at the big financial picture for you. All you need to do is bring in those statements, bring the ones in from December, we're going to take all the information and build you your own personalized financial portal so you can see your entire net worth at a bird's eye view. We're going to look at all the critical components to make sure you're on your path to financial independence. We're going to look at everything from income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the stock market. Do you have a stream of income to replace that income gap when you're retired? We're going to show you to optimize, increase the income on your portfolio. We're going to look at fees and taxes. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in your portfolio you don't know you're paying, and there's a lot of things you can be doing from a tax perspective to put more money in your pocket. We're going to show you how to reduce tax on your portfolio and optimize it for taxes, and we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about it? 
next time the market crashes or goes down? Are you protected? We're going to show you how to bulletproof your portfolio for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, determining the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? You lighting strategies now, our family has literally worked on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you've saved over 500000 for your retirement. My son, Ryan, and I will create for you your own total financial masterpiece. There's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached. But there's no plan unless you text or call right now, 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or simply call 844-PLAN-NYC, 844-PLAN. NYC. Hey, this is Bob Payne. I'm sitting here with my son, Rye Payne, and we're the pains of no pain, no gain financial radio. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I, as you know, we're very simple men, and that's why we try to keep it as simple and uncomplex for you. That's why we put together our latest guide, five ways to save on taxes in 2020, and we give you all the highlights of the new Secure Act all the new tax advantages that you have to take advantage of, you can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888. We give you five ways to save on taxes, and we give you the rundown on the new Secure Act, which gives you new ways to save on taxes that you need to be aware of. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, to 555 555- 888. That's the word bullish, the 555-888. So Bob, when you're trying to evaluate working with a financial advisor for the first time, or you want to determine if the financial advisor you have right now is the right person, I thought we could discuss what characteristics are important when you're choosing the right financial person. And I think- Well, hold on, Ryan. I know exactly what those the key characteristics are. It's got to uh, be a father-son team that works out of Manhattan. <laughs> Actually, that is the only choice you need to make, Bob, and ones that have exceptionally good voices for the radio. There you go. Okay. But besides <laughs> that, what else do you need? So I think the first one is, it's an obvious one, but so important is everything in this business is about trust. You really need to decide that the person you're going to work with is trustworthy. Well, let me ask you a question, Rye. Are you trustworthy? Of course. Of course, I'm going to course, say yes. Yeah. Wouldn't everybody say yes? Well, that's the problem. When you, if you go in and say, well, I, I got to find out if I can trust you. Tell me, are you trustworthy? Um, and you can have a you know, little lie detector test there or you can be holding their pulse, but it doesn't tell you anything. So here's what I believe. I believe when you hire a new advisor, hire someone, you got to trust, but you got to verify. Now, how do you verify if somebody's trustworthy in our industry, right? Well, to your point, trust does take time to build, but I think initially, you know, whatever the follow-up is that advisor says they're going to do, when they say they're going to follow up on you, maybe your proposal, things like that. To me, I think follow-up is a big thing in any business. So I think especially when you're in the courting phase, make sure whatever they say they're going to do, they actually do it as opposed to saying, oh, I forgot to get that to you and things like that. So I think being accountable is a huge thing and it's a great litmus test for trust. I, I agree with that 100%, but there's also something else you can do. Thanks to the U.S. government, the SEC, they have a website called FINRA, F-N-R-A, and has a, an area called Broker Check. And all you have to do is type in the name of the advisor, the name of the firm, and it'll tell you whether or not this person's ever had uh, a lawsuit or any problems. We just transferred an account the other day for a client of ours. It turned out the advisor was caught shoplifting in high school or college. Yeah, that's definitely not the kind of trait I think I want with someone trying to handle my money. So to your point, Vinru.org, you can actually look up and see the track record of an advisor you're trying to evaluate. Another thing, Bob, is I think it's such an important thing is you really want to like the person you're working with. That financial advisor should be your wing woman or wingman, right? I mean, so important to have trust and but like the person that you're dealing with. 
Well, you know, Ron, I got to tell you, I like you. I, I don't know if I ever told you that. Well, you've got great taste, Bob. I mean, that's the okay. only thing I can say about that. <laughs> and I would hire you as actually, you are my financial advisor. So what am I talking about? But I'm you not know, charging enough. <laughs> it is important to work with somebody you like. So, you know what they always say, you only have that one chance to make that first impression. Uh, so you've got to go with your gut. You know, that first impression is important because if that's the person who's going to handle your money that you have to put the trust in, if you're gone, they're going to take care of your spouse. A lot of that can be found out even in the first meeting. And it's such a personal relationship when you're talking about money and your family's involved and you're not going to talk to somebody that you don't like. I don't care how competent a financial advisor is. If you just don't like them, you're never going to have the rapport that you need to have those honest conversations about things that are on your mind. Because I can say with our client base, I have conversations that a lot of my clients wouldn't have with their own spouse just because they're very intimate when it comes to money and things like that. You need that kind of relationship with the person that's going to handle your family's wealth. It's just such a critical thing. You know, right, the other thing that really turns me off, we get a lot of people from the financial services industry to come in to pitch us, right? They want to, they want us to become clients of theirs for whatever reason. And the thing that really, really ticks me off is when they try to talk down to me as if they're more sophisticated. They have, you know, much better oh. knowledge or insight than I do. It drives me nuts. Isn't this the worst industry for people being very condescending, always talking above you, using terms you don't understand, and there's nothing worse. If you can't understand a common sense strategy or the way something's being explained to you, like run away from that actual relationship. <laughs> don't walk away. And our industry is the worst at that, right? We love to talk about all the bells and whistles of what we do, blah, blah, blah. And it's boring. No one cares about it. You know, talk in simple language. Explain it to me easily. Well, you know, I think that makes all the sense in the world, right? And here's the other thing. Here's the litmus test. If you leave that initial meeting, you know all about that advisor's latest trip and what school <laughs> his children will go to and his favorite football team and basketball team, what cocktail he drank last weekend, and uh, they don't know anything about you. That means they don't listen. And if they're not listening, then you really don't want to work with them. Yeah, nothing worse than that. I don't want to hear about my advisor's uh, last trip because then you're thinking about, wow, you know, I must be paying this woman or man a lot of money <laughs> that they're going on these great trips and they're not helping my problems, which I think links to the last thing that's really important is you want someone who's a problem solver. Um, you know, Absolutely. I always say this is the most important litmus test when you're sitting down with a new advisor that you may work with. If they start talking about products and investments first, they got the wrong idea. You know, if it doesn't start with planning, you don't have the right person because everything is about the plan first and problem solving. You know, right? It's not just it's not about investing. It's about the great goals of life, right? It's having that income that you can't outlive. It's educating children and grandchildren. It's you know gifting money to charity in a most tax advantageous way, and it's you know making sure that the IRS isn't your main beneficiary of your estate. Um, all that planning comes first, products come last, and it's too much of the reverse I see every time. We have new clients that came in that were literally, they were paying extraordinary fees, first off, which, you know, if you're getting, if you're paying an advisor through all the funds that they're recommending, you think you'd get a little service and advice. And they almost fell on the floor when we actually ran financial projections. I mean, this is a couple that's in their late 50s. They want to retire in 10 years. No one even talked to them about what their financial goals were. And they thought that was like the most amazing thing since sliced bread, when in reality, that's exactly what a financial advisor should be doing. Without a doubt, right? A little, little planning goes a long way, um, and it reveals all the problems that you may or may not have. And it's sometimes good to know that you've done the right things. So, you know, having a second opinion always helps, but uh, planning is the key. These are all great points, Ryan. I'll tell you what, if you're thinking to yourself right now, you know what? I need to be financially healthy. I need to know... Do I have the right person for the right fit for where I am at my stage of life? You know what? This would be a great time to give us a call. If you're one of our next few callers, you've saved over 500000 for retirement. Ryan and I will answer all those questions. Better yet, we'll create for you your own 360 financial portal. Now, this is a financial GPS that will tell you where you are right now. And more importantly, it'll tell you where you're going. It'll report daily on your progress of your journey to financial independence. It'll define your financial timeline and the best, most efficient route to achieve your goals. It will put your financial life on autopilot and help you to avoid the financial potholes and dead ends of the typical cookie cutter financial plan that you find on the internet 
where maybe some financial planner or, or stockbroker did for you many, many years ago. It will update your net worth in real time on a daily basis so you'll always know where you are, but most importantly, it'll know where you're going. In addition, Ryan and I will take all those statements. Matter of fact, get all those statements. They're all coming in for the end of the year. Let's stick them in a shopping bag. Let's put them in a folder. You don't even have to open them. You know, we'll bring them in. We're going to put it in a position where we're going to sit down with you and review everything. And we're going to build a portfolio that shows whether you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. Are you diversified? Boy, it's a, such a simple question. It can get very complex. What we find is most people aren't diversified. They have a collection of investments that were sold, not bought. Is your portfolio overcharging yourself? Do you have more fees than necessary? I like that idea, right? Why do you want to have more fees than necessary? You know, who wants to be overcharged? Not me. This is your opportunity to eliminate those costs and increase the performance of your portfolio. And lastly, income. You know, we all need to have income when we take that giant leap and retire. We have to fill that gap from that paycheck that doesn't show up any longer. And you know, for all of you that are retired right now, you have one goal, one goal in life, and that's to stay retired. And that requires a dependable, repeatable cash flow from your portfolio that will annually put your put your mind at ease and put you in a position to succeed. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one truly customized total financial master plan where we'll answer that age old question. Are you and your family going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over four decades for 45 years. We've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B to your goals, to your dreams with your values, with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So don't waste time. Give us a call or text at 844-752-6692. That's call or text at 844-752-6692. If you have over $500,000 saved for retirement, you're one of the next 10 callers at 844-752-6692. That's call or text at 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track at 844 844- Plan NYC. That's eight four four P L A N N Y C. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. It's time for financial propaganda of the week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob, you and I had lots of articles going back and forth all week. No one reads more than you and I, I think, when it comes to financial markets. We are just, like, voracious when it comes to uh, finding what's out there. And I know you had an article this week that was great. Why don't you give us the rundown and why it's important for our listeners to know? You know, Ryan, I'm always optimistic, but um, I I have to give out some bad news this week. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm bracing myself right now. If you still own actively managed mutual funds, you lost again. It's amazing. Even though they went up this year, only 29% of all money managers out there beat their benchmark in 2019. Pathetic performance. It's crazy to me is how in this day and age, and we talk about this all the time, would you still own a mutual fund? The fees are typically higher in a professionally managed mutual fund. And not only do they underperform, Bob, but the taxes on these things are terrible. They have to pay out capital gains every year. So take a year like 2018 when the market went down, they still paid out capital gains. So you pay taxes even though you lost money that year. I call that insult to injury. It is. And the thing is, actually, in 2018, the money managers did a tad better, just a couple of percentage points. But it turns out that only 12% of the almost 2,000 actively managed mutual funds were able to beat their benchmark in 2019. So even if they did well this year, chances are they're going to underperform next year. So it's heads you lose, tails you lose with these things, right? It's unbelievable. And you look at the longer-term averages. So over the past 15 years, same thing. Only 29% of active U.S. stock managers beat their benchmark. I mean, that's a long time to underperform. That means that at the end of the day, 71% of managers underperformed. Like, How do you even know that you have that small percentage of managers that have outperformed, it's just crazy to still own these things in this day and age. 
It really is because uh, that extra cost that you're paying could be extra percentage return that you compound that you could gift to your children or your grandchildren, or you could spend on an extra vacation. It's really kind of crazy. But I'll tell you what, there's one area of the market where they're able to do better than the market, and that's in the municipal bond market, right? Active managers of, uh, on a greater percentage outperform their index. Yeah, that's a good point to make. So stock funds, or we call equity funds, uh, typically underperform. But the bond market, which is a lot different, it's more illiquid. There's a lot of different reasons. Bond managers typically outperform their benchmark. Now, if you listen to our show, you'll know we don't like bond funds. And that's because you don't own the bonds. The fees are typically high, and they typically do underperform after fees. But owning a portfolio of bonds that have actively managed you and I found, Bob, is the best way to own bonds and the safest way to own bonds. You know, because it comes in a bond portfolio. You know, you're not trying to make a killing like you are in the stock market, right? The stock market can go up or down, very volatile. But in bonds, it's your safe money. It's not the return on the money you want. It's return of the money. So you want to make sure that somebody's looking at that underlying issuer to be certain that not only are they going to pay your interest, but when your money is due to mature, that you actually get your money back. That's right. And we've seen articles going back and forth the last couple of weeks, the other thing is in a bond fund, because you don't really see those, you don't see the underlying bonds in there, they own a lot of what we call junk bonds. Now, you can, de you can derive from the name junk bond, these are not high quality bonds that you want to own. And remember, when you own bonds in your portfolio, it's for safety, you don't want to own junk bonds, and invariably, you end up owning those junk bonds in these bond funds. It's crazy. Yeah, so stay away from actively traded mutual funds, and embrace actively managed individual municipal bonds. So, Ryan, what else did you see out there in the world of financial propaganda? Well, I have bad news today, too, Bob. Oh, come on. You know, <laughs> you can't have two bad news uh, reports in one week. Well, according to CNBC, traders grow worried about markets' rapid rise. Swim at your own risk. So some technical indicators suggest the market may be overbought, Bob. This is the end. This is the end. I think Jim Morrison said that back in the 60s. So this is the end, my only friend, the end. I just never understood this whole overbought nonsense. You know, it, how can it be overbought? I mean, the market makes new highs. been making new highs my whole life. Uh, what does this overbought thing mean, right? I mean, it's like it, a lot of people bought stock last week. I just don't get it. No, that's exactly right. It, there's, there's no such thing because markets, as we know, can keep going higher and higher and higher if they can be overbought for a very long period of time. So it really means nothing. Um, and again, you know, we talk about this all the time. If you're basing your decisions on your portfolio based on if the market's too high or too low or the market's going to do this, you don't have the right strategy, right? Any decision you make about taking money out of stocks, putting money into stocks, should be in direct correlation to what your goals are. And if you're not doing it that way, you know, it's time to reevaluate. Yeah, I can't agree with you more, Ryan. Investing with a purpose is always a great way to go, you know, not to be uh, held uh, hostage by the vagaries of the stock market. But, you know, the thing is, when you talk about these technical indicators, basically you got people with squiggly lines on the chart, you know, trying to predict the future based on what the, the line did in the past. You know, all I can say about chart readers is this. If you don't like the way the chart looks, turn it upside down. You'll feel better. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, so I think bottom line is, you know, you, you got to be really careful right now because, again, markets can continue to go up even though that they're all time highs right now. And I hear this all the time. People will say to me, or clients will say, well, we know it can't go up forever. Yes, that's true. But on the other hand, there's no reason the market can't continue to go higher for quite a long time. In fact, statistically, whenever you have a big year in the stock market, like last year, up 30%, the next year the market tends to go up double digits again. So the odds are this year will actually be very good in the stock market based on history. Well, Rob, we're only three weeks in and our growth portfolio is up over 5% already. So, um, you know, <laughs> maybe by maybe in January, we'll have a double digit return. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We still have a couple of days left. So, Bob, and you're the yeah. internal optimist. So uh, it could happen. Rob, I've been around for 66 years and I'm still looking for my first rich pessimist. <laughs> well said. And we want you to be a rich optimist. Uh, if you're one of the next eight callers, you have over $500,000 saved for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan, and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full, holistic financial plan where we look at everything, the big picture. All you need to do is bring in last month's statement at the end of the year from December 
bring them in the office. We're going to take all that data, and we're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where you can view your entire net worth at a bird's eye view, and we can start to look at all the critical components that make a great financial plan. We're going to look at everything from income. You need a plan for income for retirement. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. Do you have an income plan? We're going to show you how to build and optimize the income on your portfolio to build a stream of income that you can't outlive. We're going to look at diversification. When the market goes down again, are you protected? Do you have the right strategy in place? We're going to show you how to safeguard and protect your portfolio throughout retirement. And we're going to look at fees and taxes. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs on those portfolios and those mutual funds that have underperformed that you're paying too much in fees on and pay too much in taxes. We're going to show you where all the hidden costs are in your portfolio, all the tax inefficiencies, show you how to reduce that cost and optimize your portfolio for taxes so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together and do one total financial master plan and determine the most important question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? U utilizing strategies our family has literally worked on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. What you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. NYC. If you are one of our next eight callers, you've saved over 500000 for retirement. Brian and I will create for you your own total financial masterpiece. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached, but there's no plan unless you text or call right now. 844-752-6692. 844-752-6692. Or simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. 844 844-PLAN P-L-A-N-N-Y-C. Hey, this is Bob. I'm with Rye. And we're the father and son team of the pains of no pain, no gain financial planning. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And that's P-A-Y-N-E for the record. And Bob and I want to make sure you have the most common sense, practical advice for your planning and investing. That's why we put together our newest guide, Five Ways to Save on Taxes in 2020, and we give you an update on the new SECURE Act, which gives you some new tax benefits you want to be aware of. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH, that's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH, to 555-888, Five Ways to Save on Taxes in 2020. Again, money saved in taxes, just as green as any money you can make invested, and we give you an update on the new SECURE Act which gives you some new options and new ways to save on taxes. We give you all the highlights of that. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. And if you want to learn about more about Bob and I, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. Simply go to BeBullish.com. That's BeBullish.com. You can actually subscribe to the show. You can catch some old episodes. And yes... Bob's hair is real, but we want you to check it out for yourself. Simply go to BeBullish.com and you can learn more about Payne Capital Management. And most weeks, you can catch myself, other advisors at Payne Capital Management on all the major networks, everything from CNBC, Fox Business News, to Yahoo Finance, talking about our latest thoughts on the economy, the market. And if you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can always email us directly. Simply email questions at bbullish.com. That's questions at bbullish.com. Bob and I answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we have our man in the studio, Dan Irving, to help with questions. Dan, how's it going, man? Ooh. Hello, Ryan and Bob. I'm doing great today. I'm actually celebrating my birthday today. Hey! hey. Happy hey. birthday, really? Dan. Thank you, yeah. I'm finally 18. <laughs> a little bit older. I finally made it to a quarter of a century. Wow, wow, congratulations. Yeah. Feels really feels like a special day to me. <laughs> you seem a little more grown up. I, you can ride a car now, <laughs> yeah. too. So it's, uh, you can tell in my voice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything about you says you can rent a car. It's just, it speaks volumes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got some great questions on the mailbag today. Uh, the first one is from Sherry in Roslyn, New York. And Sherry says, Bob, 
I've spent 40 years saving and investing, and now that I'm about to retire, I can't even comprehend the notion of turning things in the other direction and taking money out of savings instead of putting money in. I know this is something that people do all the time, so why does it terrify me so much? Well, you know what, uh, Rye? I think Sherry's in good company. I think that terrifies everyone, no matter what your net worth is, no matter how much wealth you've accumulated. It's that whole idea that you're going to live off your savings, not off your human capital, your hard work. So, you know, how, how do you overcome something like that, Rye? I mean, it's a, you know, it's a big plunge. Yeah, it really is. And there's always the uncertainties and the vulnerability of knowing that you don't have that paycheck coming in. Um, but I think, you know, the one thing you want to do, and we always talk about this, is when you go from working to retirement, your portfolio needs to make the transition from what we call a wealth accumulation portfolio to a wealth distribution portfolio. And my definition of a wealth distribution portfolio, Bob, is you want to make sure that you have more reliability, that you have things you can count on, uh, unlike things like the market that can be very unreliable from year to year. Well, that's the whole thing. And that's why we use you know certain financial tools, certain engines that will actually produce a report where you can see it in black and white. I mean, I can't think of anything more comforting, Rye, than being able to look at on paper, right, your life financially to see that you have enough income coming every year because you can't do that with a calculator. You can't do it with simple math. Yeah. And it's like uh, my brother, your son, Chris Payne always says, you get a better outcome with income. And to me, that's the beauty of it. If you can start to look at what's that income gap going to be when you stop working, the paycheck's not coming in. You're probably going to have social security coming in. Maybe you have a pension if you're lucky, but what's going to fill in the rest. And if you can build a portfolio where you have consistent income that's coming in, you know where it's coming from, man, that takes a lot of stress out of the equation. And that's an exercise everybody should be doing. And it's so simple because it's, you know, it's your social security and your pension, maybe some inheritance, but you also have your dividends and your interest. If you have a properly built portfolio for retirement, you know, I'm talking a portfolio with staying power, you make money every day. You accrue dividends every day. You accrue interest every day. You know, every, you know, when you come in January 1st, you know exactly what you're going to make that year, just like you're still in a job getting a paycheck. It's a huge uh, dynamic difference. And I know with our clients that are retired, maybe 60% of our clients are baby boomers. You know, we set it up so that that check just comes right into your checking account, just like you got oh, your yeah. paycheck. Like having that kind of system set up in place is just such a great way to take the stress out and start to put together what we call that wealth distribution plan. The only thing I don't understand, Rye, is why doesn't everybody have a wealth projection? <laughs> it's wrong, Bob. It's just wrong. All right. So I won't retire until everybody does. All right. What else we got today, Dan? All right. We got our next question from Annabelle in Paramus, New Jersey. And Annabelle says, Ryan, I've been loving the growth in my 401k for the last several years, but I just don't know how long this ride can last. Quite frankly, I can't believe it's lasted this long. When should I walk away from this roulette wheel? Well, hold on. Let me get my crystal ball out. I can tell you exactly the day take all your money out of the market right before the downturn. Now, I wish I had a crystal ball, but uh, Annabelle, look, you're asking the right questions. You know, with the market going up and up and up, you probably have more risk in your portfolio than you should. So really, it doesn't matter when the market's going to go down. You want to be proactive now. And that means you want to start putting the safeguards in place before any sort of market correction in the future, because no one knows exactly when that's going to happen. No, you don't know, Ryan. The thing is, I'm finding right now with the conversations I'm having with uh, new clients and existing clients and prospective clients is that everybody's saying the same thing. Hey, trees don't grow to the sky, Bob. This thing can't go up forever. But um, they're thinking, well, I'm going to stay on as long as this horse is really galloping. I'm going to stay on the horse. I said, well, that's not the time to think about staying on the horse, thinking about times to get out, get off the horse. I mean, that's weird. You got yeah. to be a little smart about this. We talked about this earlier. It's like when the music stops, no one's going to tell you ahead of time, and then it's too late. So you know, we talk about having the proverbial all-weather portfolio, and that just means that you're always protected. Um, you don't want to go into any situation where your money's invested, where there's too much risk, especially as you're getting close to retirement. And in retirement, you got to structure that stuff now. You can't wait. So, right. I guess what you're saying to everyone is as you start to look more like my dad, and you got more wrinkles <laughs> and gray hair than you do blonde hair and smooth skin, you got to do risk your portfolio. Is that what I hear? It's exactly what you hear, but let's not discount how great your hair still looks, Bob. We'll leave on that <laughs> note. Well, on that note, Rye, I want to ask you a question. On a scale of one to 10, 
How do our uh, mailbag writers sound today, Sherry and Annabelle? How would you rank them on a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of being financially organized? I like the fact that Sherry and Annabelle are both thinking about the future. Um, so I, I want to give them both a five because being aware of what your issues are is number one. Now you got to act on it, and now you got to look to protect your portfolio and start c- coming up with a game plan to actually take the money from your portfolio. They're on their way. Some work to do there, though, Bob. No, that's very nice of you, Ryan. Very generous today. And, and so let Thank me you. ask all of you, um, as you're listening, on a scale of one to ten, how financially organized are you right now? What would your spouse give you as a rating? What would Ryan give you? Would he give you a 10? Well, if you're not a 10, there's no reason why you shouldn't want to be. And if you do, here's your opportunity. If you're one of our next two callers and you've saved at least 500000 for retirement, Ryan and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, with that, we create your own 360 financial portal. It's a financial GPS. You're in your car right now driving around. You know how to get there because of your GPS. Why not have one in your financial life that will tell you where you are, map out where you're going, and report daily on your progress of your journey to financial independence. It'll define your financial timeline and the best, most efficient route to achieve your goals. It will put your financial life on autopilot and help you to avoid those financial potholes and dead ends of the typical cookie cutter financial plan that you find on the internet or some stockbroker sold you years ago. It'll update your net worth daily in real time And it'll let you know where you are and, more importantly, where you're going in real time when you want to look at it. In addition, Ryan and I will sit down with you and go over your portfolio to make sure you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. You need to be diversified. Diversification is the only free lunch on Wall Street. There's a lot of you out there right now with a collection of investments that are in bad shape if we hit another volatile period of the market like we did in 2008 and 2009. We have a lot of excess fees in these portfolios. I'm not sure why you're still paying them. We want to help you to reduce those fees because I don't know about you. I really don't like being overcharged. I don't want you overcharged. Let us reduce those costs for you. And lastly, income. We need to increase the income when we hit those retirement years. Better yet, if you're retired right now, your number one goal is to stay retired. That requires income, repeatable, dependable, cash flow, hard currency, something that you can take and buy lunch with. You can't buy lunch with relative performance. You need to have income in those retirement years. And what we're going to do is we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan where we're going to answer that age-old question for you and your family. Are you going to outlive your money? Or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my son and I and my family have been perfecting now for over four decades. That's right. For over 40 years, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So don't waste time. We have four slots left at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot. Make sure you're on track. Get a second opinion at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot at 844-752-6692. 6692. That's 844 Plan NYC. That's 844 P L A N N Y C. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne. No pain, no gain. Financial Radio. And that's pain, P A Y N E. And Bob and I want to give you the most common sense, practical advice for your planning and investing this year. That's why we put together our latest guide, Five Ways to Save on Taxes in 2020, and we give you the highlights of the new Secure Act, which is some new tax benefits that you didn't have before. We give you all the highlights. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. We give you five ways to save on taxes this year, and we give you the highlights of the new tax reform, the Secure Act, so you can take advantage of all the new tax vehicles. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. And now we have a very special guest on the show. Actually, I think our most frequent guest these days. Yeah. We have a star financial <laughs> advisor at Payne Capital Management, Emily DeValent. Hey, guys. Yeah. And the lady who's next right right to me. <laughs> every day, Every day, day. <laughs> every day, all day. Um, 
This is our spotlight segment. Every week what we do is we dissect a real financial plan and we uncover the flaws or what we call pain points so our listeners can avoid the same mistakes they're planning and investing. And M, first off, it's a pleasure to have you here. <laughs> Likewise, <laughs> Ryan. It's a pleasure to be here. You Well, I agree. <laughs> uh, but you worked on a case this past week. And why don't you give us a rundown of how you helped uh, this couple get on their path to financial freedom? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is a couple that came in. They are not sure if they want to retire yet. They're like a couple mm-hmm. of years away. Um, but they started to kind of gather some of their information. They actually work with a financial advisor at the moment. And so he kind of said to them, why don't you guys, you know, let's start figuring out a little bit of a plan. Um, and the so they started to get together um, things like Social Security, um, how much income they're going to be bringing in and yep. what their uh, expenses are at the moment. And they realized that they were going to be <laughs> – they had a big problem. They were missing a huge income gap. Ah. Mm. Yeah. Now, they have a financial advisor that was mm-hmm. actually running these numbers for them. Mm-hmm. What didn't they like about this advisor that they said, hey, I want to chat with Emily DeValent? Yeah, so <laughs> he wasn't really going to solve that issue. He was kind of like, well, you're, yeah, good you, luck. You, got, you got an income. <laughs> you Take care, brush your hair. <laughs> yeah. You sure uh, have a problem, huh? Yeah, exactly. So they were like, all right, well, let's see if anyone else uh, <laughs> has any other suggestions. Um, and so we took a look at what they had, and we did realize that they were going to have a pretty big gap in the income. Um, but one of the things we, we noticed is that they weren't their investments weren't making much in terms of dividends. Yes. And that was a huge problem for them. Um, and they were also in really high-cost mutual funds. So they were actually paying uh, about 3% just wow. in fees. Wow. Yeah, on the account. <clears throat> That's a that's a big hurdle to overcome when you have um, money market rates at a quarter of one percent and ten year treasuries at one point eight percent and you're paying three percent before you start. It's like it's like buying negative yield European bonds. <laughs> well, do they even know they're paying three percent? Because that's a hefty fee. I imagine that was a surprise. Yeah, no, they didn't. They thought I think they were paying about one and a half percent for the actual financial advisor, but they didn't realize that they were paying almost another one and a half percent just in these internal fees. That's why it's so important to know what all the fees are in your portfolio because they add up and a lot of times they're, they're hidden. That's why you know you did that spreadsheet x-ray mm-hmm. where you can actually see mm-hmm. the real costs of what they were paying. Yeah. So well, a lot of times the uh, stockbroker will explain it away saying, well, you don't actually pay those fees. They just take it out of the portfolio. <laughs> yeah. I never got that explanation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you are paying. Take it from your return. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So not only were their investments not making that much for them, they were actually also getting eaten up by these internal costs. Yeah, it's like uh, my brother Chris, Bob's son, Chris as well, says uh, you get a better outcome with income. What's crazy about this is – between reducing the cost on the portfolio that they don't see they're paying and increasing the income, that's another $51,000 a year. That's like crazy money uh, every year that's now going to their pocket, that's not going into you know, whatever fun company's pocket and getting that increase in income because the fees are so much lower. I mean, that's real money. It's absolutely real money, Ryan. It's uh, A lot of it you can see where they're using – and I, I don't want you to let right. I want you to tune out right now because you're not going to believe it. They're using bond funds for their bond. Oh my investment. god! <laughs> you should see Emily's base you know, right now. Rash. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, you know, these these bond funds they, they don't even generate enough yield to overcome the internal and external fees that these poor people were paying. So it was a it was a just a lose lose situation. So thank goodness they met with Emily. So goodness. just out of curiosity, what's the reaction here? Because, I mean, obviously you're able to increase the income a lot and save a lot in fees. Um, you know, what was the reaction to just seeing that laid out for them? Well, I think that they were, well, they were obviously extremely happy because we weren't able to just kind of solve the problem for them. But we were able to, you know, do two things. We were able to take down their expenses, but also increase the cash flow while doing it, which is kind of, they thought was kind of crazy. They didn't realize how much they were actually paying in total. They just kind of saw that one and a half percent go out the door every quarter. Um, but they didn't realize that other one and a half percent was just yeah. going. Like Bob said, you know, people just say, well, you don't see it. You don't realize you're paying it. So now, Bob, are you shocked? I'm looking at the, the case right now that two of the accounts, they're paying over four percent in fees, which is just insane. Mm-hmm. Is it shocking that they were annuities? <laughs> <laughs> Why do annuities have, to have to be the highest fee thing on the planet? Like four percent a year. Like, give me a break. It can't be possible, right? Because I watch these annuity commercials every night 
on the financial news and there's no cost. There's no fees that anybody uh, told me about. Uh, yeah. Unbelievable. Well, as Bob and I like to say, another financial masterpiece, Emily, great job here. Thank you very much. Um, and this just speaks to just so important to realize what you're actually paying in fees. And again, how can you increase the income on your portfolio? And if you're thinking to yourself right now, this is the kind of review I need. Um, here's a shot to do it. We literally have two slots left. If you have over $500,000 saved for retirement, myself, Bob, our superstar financial advisor, Emily DeValent, will run for you our total financial master plan. And we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review just like this where we look at everything. All you need to do is bring those statements in from the year, end of the year, bring them in the office. We're going to take all that data and we're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal so you can finally see your entire net worth at a bird's eye view. We're going to look at all the critical components just like this. We're going to look at income. We're able to increase the income on this portfolio by over twenty grand a year. That's real money that you could have for retirement. And we're going to look at fees. They were paying over 4% on some accounts. What hidden fees are in your portfolio we can help you reduce? We're going to look at diversification. If the market goes down tomorrow, are you protected? What hidden risks do you have? We're going to point it out and show you how to protect yourself for retirement. And we're going to look at taxes. Money saved in taxes, just as green as any money can make invested. We're going to show you how to optimize taxes on the portfolio so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we have literally worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or you can simply just call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. If you're one of our next two callers, you've saved over 500000 for retirement. Rye, M, and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there's no plan unless you text or call right now, 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. Well, another great show this morning. Emily DeValent, the regular here at uh, No Pain, No Gain Radio. Awesome to have you as always. Thank you very much. Um, you know, you're not you're making sure that I'm on track with all my things, all your as clients. Always. You're yeah. You're, we're honored to have you on the show as always. <laughs> Big Bob, what's on tap for the rest of your <laughs> weekend in Naples? You know, Rye, I think uh, I, I'm going to take a little rest. I've been working very hard this week. <laughs> we can tell by that tan, Bob. So, but uh, <laughs> we're not judging. <laughs> well, have a great weekend, and as always. Be bullish.